Okay, what I'm going to do is break down a real quick way of showing you how to create the catapult winch, which is this piece right here. Um, it's basically going to be created by making half of it, this section here, and then mirroring it over. All right. I'm not going to go through step by exact step, um, but I just want you all to be able to see uh, how this thing has been made um, and how to kind of piece it together. All right, so to start with, what I want to do is have just that kind of side bracket piece. Remember, you got the boards that run underneath here, um, and you have another bracket piece on the other side. Now, the scales here won't be exactly the same, but this should work pretty well for um, uh, showing you how this thing is constructed. Uh, basically, the way this is works is just basically start out with the cylinder. I'm going to change its number of sides to 16. So it's a little sim more simplistic. And then I'm going to rotate it on its side. Okay, So rotate this right here, negative uh, 90. That's what we want it to be. And then I'm going to move it and I move it on the side here. We'll, we'll get it lined up here perfectly here shortly. Um, so right here, I'm going to take this piece here. This is going to be our, our kind of wedge. Uh, I'm going to keep it set to where it needs to be. And this is going to need to fit right inside of here. Okay, so you may have to adjust the scale of your bracket or adjust the scale of your cylinder in order to have this fit. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to scale that down just a little bit so that we have uh, where it's not clipping through on the sides, or at least not clipping through much. You know, little imperceptible kind of bits is okay, but I will just kind of adjust these so that they fit. All right. Now, once we've done that, we have the cylinder here in the middle. And what I want to do is go to vertex mode, and I'm going to grab this side here, hit W, hold down J again and snap it back to the origin here, okay? And then this side, what I'm going to do with this is just kind of pull it out just a little bit, okay? Because this is going to be the um, section with the spiky bits on it, the, uh, with the cogs, see, as you can see, all right? So what we want to do now is go to our Insert Edge Loop tool Make sure that equal distance from edge is set. And what we want to do is add an edge loop right here and then another edge loop right here. All right, that's going to be for the other pieces, but we want to make sure this small section stays right in here with this bracket. And we add one more edge loop right along here. All right, to give us our different parts and pieces. All right, so now face mode, select the faces in the middle. Hit extrude and then pull the pieces out. All right, because that's going to have to, this piece here will hold it in on this side and then do the same thing over on this side. So select these guys here, hit extrude, and this one will want to pull out just a little bit more. All right, let's say something along those lines. All right, and then we have this side piece here because we want to leave this as a kind of an indention. All right, so double click. And you can select all those faces really quickly, or you can go through and hand select them. Hit extrude one more time, and then pull out the side piece. Okay, so you want to have this kind of like inner gear piece. All right. So that gives us our base uh, for the actual winch mechanism. Okay. All right. So the next step we're wanting to do is create the actual uh, gear cog, I guess you could say. So I'm going to do one more cylinder. And this cylinder, I want to make sure it's set to say 16 sides as well. Keep it kind of consistent. Um, go ahead and rotate it negative 90. Uh, it's in the X, so negative 90 on the X. Nope, I was wrong. So let's do a zero and then a negative 90 on the Z. There we go. All right. So there's our poly shape. Go ahead and move it over. Now, what I want to make sure is this thing is set up in the, is set up on the uh, 
center of this piece. So what I want to do is hold down the V, which is vertex snap. See how it turns to a, to a circle? And see there's my center vertex. I'm just going to drag it till it's right over that. And when I do that, okay, see how it's nice and centered on this model? That's what we want. So pull this out, shrink it down, and then scale it up. Okay, because what we want to have happen is this piece here needs to have enough room for our cogs to fit on the outside. So I'm keep scaling that up a little bit more. Yeah, something kind of like that. There we go. Shrink that down and then pull this over. So we want a little bit of space here. And that'll pretty well take care of that. All right, so now we need the pieces that are going to go around here. So it's going to be one more cylinder. Number of size on this one, right down to 12. And then let's just go ahead and shrink this down to about eh, a little smaller than that. Okay, go back to that negative 90 again, and then let's move this piece to where it's going to work. Right here on the side. All right. So let's scale this be kind of small ish. Needs to be to fit in this little area. So diameter wise, that looks about right. And then we're going to pull it the other direction. So it's going to cover most of this. Okay. Now, in order to create this cog and have it go around, instead of having it um, be duplicate, 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 we're going to do a duplicate special in order uh, to make this thing work. Uh, but first, we need to change the pivot point. So if I hit Insert or Home on the Max, uh, hold down V and snap it to that center vertex again, you'll see that it will now rotate around the outside of that cog, which is exactly what we're wanting. So I want to take this piece here, and we're going to need seven copies of this. At 45 degrees, it'll be seven copies right around this, uh, this, this gear piece. So I'm going to Edit. Go down to Duplicate Special, and what I want to do is do Copy, and then this is this is Group Under Parent. That's, that's not a big too much big of a deal, um, but we're going to want to rotate it, um, I believe, along the X axis. So it's going to be this one here, and I want to type in 45. Scale. Make sure your scales in this case are all going to be set to one, and number of copies needs to be seven. Okay. So this is the settings that that I'm going to start with. Okay. If it if it blows up, then we'll know what to undo. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and hit Apply, and hey, it all worked. So I now have seven copies of this cog evenly spaced going around uh, this piece. Okay, So that definitely works very, very well for, for doing that quickly. All right, so now we need the cogs that go on the inner, inner piece here. So let's just take this top one, do a Control-D to duplicate it, so I've now got a, a copy of it. Modify, center pivot, and then rotate around. Okay. What this will give me is just kind of a real quick way of just adding some more geometry. Like these little, little shorter and thicker and, and, and uh, meaner kind of pieces and kind of place this in there. That looks that looks decent. Let's, let's just shrink that down just a little bit more. There you go, and then put it kind of in the middle over here. All right, so this piece is good, except that it's, well, right over the top of, of our uh, other gear cog. So what I want to do is do the same thing again. Insert, hit V, snap it back in the little spot, and then hit E to rotate. And I'm going to rotate it until it's right about in the middle. Okay, you can see how, um, see how the, the lines are, are kind of lining up here. We could snap this, but this will work. Uh, so it's kind of in the middle. Now, all this translate transform information, for what we're about to do, we're going to need to, to kind of freeze this so that our rotations are going to work. So I'm going to go to Modify, Freeze Transformations. It's going to lock everything at zero, zero. Okay. So what I want to do now is go to Edit, Duplicate Special, because we're going to need another seven copies of this, and give it a shot. All right, so that X rotation is really working. Um, it will not work and it will blow up horribly if you do not freeze your transformations. So make sure you freeze the transformations. Um, but there are your cog pieces. All right. So last but not least, we're going to need a center piece to kind of hold on to the, uh, the handle. 
So we go cylinder, new one, make uh, make it about 12 sides as well. Uh, 12 sides, 15, 12, there we go. If you R, shrink her down, E, rotate 90 degrees, and then pull it right on through. Now, again, it's not snapped to the center, so hold down V and we'll just drag it until it kind of fits. And this pulp paint beam doesn't have to be fugacious, but we want it to be long enough to where you see it on the inside here. And then we have enough room on the outside uh, for our handle to kind of attach to. So, so we can have along those lines there. All right. So now to make the handle, the actual kind of crank for it, what we're going to do is use a cube. And the cube. You go to polycube, go to subdivisions width, say two by two by two. Let's see what that kind of gives me. All right, that's going to be a good start. Let's add one more here. Um, that'll be kind of good for a height. And then I'll add several for the depth. Okay. So what I'm going to do is, is set up some basic subdivisions, shrink this thing down, and kind of move it, uh, move the rough shape into place. All right. Now what I want to do is go into my side view here and just do a little poly editing. Okay. So take these vertices and just pull those down, pull those down. Kind of create a, a, a nice kind of curve along uh, the edges here. Here we go. And then we'll do some minor tweaking. So it's kind of rounded, kind of a nice round shape to it. Like so. And then what I want to do is come in on this side. And then this side, I'm just going to shrink them down. That's what I want to do. What I want to do is do this. There we go. Come on side views here. So vertices U and then U. Just kind of screw in. So we have this roundness on the top, roundness on the bottom. And what that'll help do is just kind of make it look a little more like hand carved. All right. Work on the scale just a little bit, make it a little, make it a little more slender. Move this piece on right into here. Let's just check that fit. Looks pretty good. Here we go, something like that. Take this little section here, Control D to duplicate it. Move it over, modify. Center pivot, and then we'll just move it down, move it over, scale it down just a little bit, fit this handle piece here. Move right on in. All right, right, all right. So there you go. There's the entire side of the winch. All right. So how do we make the duplicate? Well, the duplicate uh, actually works out pretty easy. Uh, what we want to do is take some of these, all these parts that are all part of the whole or a whole object. Okay. So I have all my cogs in, in this long piece here. I'm going to go to Mesh Combine and take this with all of its cog pieces. Let's just do it this way. So I have that with all of its cog pieces. Go to Mesh Combine. And then we'll take the handle and do a Mesh Combine. So we have this, this, and this. That's three pieces that we're going to need uh, copied over. Well, this one, we need to get rid of this back face first. So I'm going to select that vertex, hold down control, right click, go two faces, two faces, and hit delete. Okay. Now this isn't going to be 
uh, mirrored over, it's just going to be mirror geometry. So I'm going to go to mesh, mirror geometry. I want to make sure merge with original is turned on. And because this is along the X axis down here, you're going to see it's along the X axis, hit apply. Okay, so that's going to give us this whole uh, long axle kind of piece. Um, before you do this, and because y'all will be on your actual catapults, uh, y'all can test the fit and before you do this to make sure that the, all the geometry is going to work. This one, however, I want to do a, because I'm not mirroring the, ge the geometry, I'm going to want to do a duplicate special. Okay, so make sure that rotate is set back to zero and my scale that scale now needs to be set to a negative one and make sure your number of copies is back down to one you don't want to do seven copies of this thing okay so here hit apply and we have our cog one more time we now have our handle all right this handle if we try to rotate it it's going to rotate kind of funny so insert again, hold down V, and just kind of say snap it right there for the moment. And then we can rotate it around. So it's going to point it out the other direction. Okay. Now, last piece is this. If you haven't already created another, another version of it, um, you can either just command D, duplicate, and then move it over. Or you can uh, mirror it over as well. The easiest way for this is if you take the translate X, which right here is 4.15, say so make that 4.5, go command D to duplicate it, move it over, and then change that to a negative 4.45. And boom, bada bing, we have the uh, completed axle. Okay. All right, any questions or whatever? I think uh, just find places that confuse you on it and uh, stop it and watch it over a couple of times and y'all should be should be able to figure it out all right see you guys later